Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are. And thank you so much for joining us today to learn more about Philanthropedia's custom research opportunity for foundations. To begin, let me start with a few introductions. As Diana said, my name is Erin Andrews, and I'm a Senior Director of Nonprofit Strategy at GuideStar. I oversee a number of initiatives within GuideStar, including the GuideStar Exchange Program to encourage nonprofits to share more data, and our Philanthropedia research to identify high-impact nonprofits. My colleague, Jasmine Morrow, will be presenting today with me as well. She is our Manager of Philanthropedia Research, running our research process from start to finish and working closely with foundations to run custom research. Lastly, Diana Hand, who you just heard from, is joining us as well to help coordinate the logistics of this webinar. Diana is the Senior Marketing Manager at GuideStar. Thanks, Diana, so much for your help. Today, we're excited to introduce to you Philanthropedia and the work that we do. In particular, the goal of this webinar is to share information about our custom research product with you, a research opportunity that is specifically tailored for foundations. We'll talk about the value of this sort of research, how the process works, a little more about our track record and what Philanthropedia has accomplished to date, some examples of our past custom research projects, and why this tool is particularly important for foundations. And we'll leave room at the end for any questions you might have about our work or this opportunity. Okay, let's get started. First, an introduction to Philanthropedia. We started Philanthropedia in 2009 because we realized that one of the hardest things to do in the nonprofit sector was accurately measure the impact an organization was having. And yet to us, when deciding where to make a donation, we felt that was the most important piece of information that we wanted to know. Was the organization actually fulfilling their mission, helping people, making a positive impact? We didn't want to give to just any organization. We wanted to give to the organizations that were the most effective. Knowing that individuals across the nonprofit sector and even individuals within the same cause area measure impact differently, we came up with a crowdsourcing methodology to leverage the wisdom of experts across entire social causes so that we could uncover which nonprofits were the best at fulfilling their mission and making a difference. Later on in our presentation, we'll talk in more detail about who these experts are and exactly how our methodology works. Then in April of 2011, GuideStar acquired Philanthropedia so that our research could reach and influence a much wider audience. GuideStar believes in helping donors make informed decisions, and Philanthropedia is a great resource for donors to learn more about some of the best nonprofits out there. Philanthropedia's research operations are run as an independent research division within GuideStar, and the results of our research efforts are integrated with GuideStar's database. Now let me tell you a little bit more about how custom research can benefit your foundation and community. Over the years, we expanded our research locally in the Bay Area of California, where we're located, nationally and even internationally. And through that experience, we realized that different causes resonate more in different communities. For example, the arts might be of greater interest to folks in the Los Angeles area, but the environment might be of more importance to communities in Minnesota. This led us to develop custom research opportunities for foundations across the country. Foundations like yours and community foundations in particular are extraordinarily in tune with the interests of your community members and the needs of the individuals in your community. You know what donors care about, and you know that those needs and interests can shift over time. And you likely also know that research can be very, very time and labor intensive. What we specialize in is running independent research and gathering detailed information about highly effective nonprofits. Working together, Philanthropedia can run independent research to uncover data that benefits your community, leaving you with more time to do what you do best, connect with donors in your community, and provide them the services to facilitate their philanthropy. Increasingly, donors are asking for more information about impact and effectiveness. This is specifically what our research focus is. Foundations can use this impact-focused data 
to augment other data about nonprofits in your community that you might already have and know. In addition to providing detailed analyses about the impact nonprofits are having in your community, we also collect data about other organizational strengths, such as leadership and financial management, which might contribute to the success of these nonprofits. By collecting these data, we aim to look beyond some more one-dimensional evaluation metrics, such as the overhead ratio, and provide a more nuanced, holistic perspective about a nonprofit. We feel that Philanthropedia's methodology allows us to find answers that may be less apparent through other research methods. For example, we recognize that even great nonprofits could still improve, so we take the opportunity in our research to collect additional data about how these high-impact nonprofits could further improve. This is actually one of the hardest pieces of information to collect about nonprofits, but because we ask for this constructive feedback in the context of a recommendation about a great nonprofit, we're actually able to collect some useful feedback, which can help nonprofits improve their practice even more. Through our research, we often collect recommendations on more than 100 nonprofits in a particular cause. And while many individuals within that cause will be familiar with some of the nonprofits that are recommended, we often can uncover lesser known organizations as well that may fulfill niche or more specific needs in the community. And lastly, we recognize that impact is a backward looking metric and organizations with a longer track record are more likely to emerge through this process. Therefore, we separately ask our experts to recommend promising startup organizations that have the potential to have a big impact in the future. This dimension is particularly appealing to some segments of donors who wish to fund innovation in their community. What's additionally important about our research is that we can act as a neutral third party to conduct research in your community and provide insight into the nonprofit landscape. You and your constituents can trust that our research is unbiased. We really have no agenda, and our research is fueled entirely by experts in the field. Because nonprofit impact is so difficult to measure, we use the experience of professionals to identify effective organizations. We believe that experts working in the field have the best insight into how effective nonprofits are. We consider foundation professionals one segment of our expert pool. Foundation professionals' core responsibility is to evaluate and research organizations to fund. Therefore, we leverage their knowledge and expertise to uncover these organizations. We also think researchers, academics, and think tank professionals offer a valuable perspective. These experts often specialize in the cause area we're researching and have researched trends over time, know which approaches have been proven to be most effective, and are in tune with organizations on the ground implementing those programs. Another critical expert segment for us is actually the, the leaders of the nonprofit organizations. These leaders usually have many years of experience working in that cause, often have worked at multiple organizations, and are aware of peers in their field performing similar work. It's important to note that our experts are not allowed to recommend the organization for which they work. So these nonprofit leaders must look outside their own organization to contribute to our research. Finally, we also look to many others working in the field, such as government officials, journalists, consultants, and others who may be deeply involved in the work of nonprofits in their community. The experts are at the core of our research, and they're the professionals working in your community engaged in the nonprofit sector at the highest level. Our research leverages their expertise on behalf of your foundation so that you can provide trustworthy, independent data to your donors and help direct more donation dollars to some of the most effective organizations in your community. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jasmine to tell you more details about the custom research product specifically. Thanks, Erin. Um, now that Erin has given you a high-level look at Philanthropedia and this product, I'm going to give you some details about the logistics and how the process works. So I'll start by walking you through the research process from idea conception to revealing the results. We start by working with you to identify a cause. 
you'll likely come to the table with ideas, and this stage is to get clear on that as well as to make sure that we're defining the cause in such a way that we get really robust results. So questions that we answer in this stage are things like, are there enough experts in this field, et cetera. Second, we enter into a preliminary research by conducting over-the-phone interviews with top experts in the field. This step allows us to gain a better understanding of the cause area and define the scope of the research. It also helps to inform the expert list that we compile in the next stage of the process. When we partnered with Minnesota Philanthropy Partners, which is a community foundation consortium that we'll talk about later in the presentation, they chose to be very involved in this stage of the process. Um, so what they did is they connected us with sector experts that they'd already identified in their previous work. Since they had a strong understanding of the field, this helped to ensure that our research included perspectives from experts who were trusted in the community and that we didn't miss out on components of the cause that were particularly of interest to Minnesota partners. This is a great example of how you can really tailor this research to fit your needs. So that brings me to the third step, creating the expert list. Through systematic online research, we compile a comprehensive and representative list of about 600 to 800 experts for each cause that we research. To refresh your memory, we define experts as foundation professionals, nonprofit senior staff, academics and researchers, and other professionals such as consultants, government officials, and journalists who have insight into the field. When we're putting this list together, we make sure that it's diverse along various axes such as including the different focus areas within a cause, their types of profession, and geographic location. And so ultimately, our aim is to develop a diverse, representative, and independent sample of experts. We then send out an online sample, oh, excuse me, an online survey via email to the experts on the list and ask them to recommend high-impact nonprofits. Experts are expected to provide qualitative analysis about the impact of each of these organizations, other organizational strengths, and areas for improvement. Experts are also given the opportunity to recommend promising startups in this phase. We keep the research survey open for six weeks, and during this time we call the experts to encourage their participation and to answer any questions they may have. Across our 30 causes, our average response rate is 15%, which is very high for an online survey. Our response rates have ranged from 5% to as high as 30%. After we collect the responses from the first survey, we do some preliminary analysis to identify nonprofits where a consensus has emerged. And at this point, we invite only the experts who participated in the first survey to complete a second survey. The second survey is an important step in vetting the results as it gives experts a chance to comment on all of the organizations that are up for further consideration. And this survey invites them to tell us to what extent they agree with their colleagues' recommendations that these are among the highest impact nonprofits in that field. So next, we analyze the data from both surveys and come up with a list of high impact nonprofits for that issue area um, based on the consensus of the experts. Plus, we perform data cleanup, standardization, and analysis on the collected expert comments for each of these nonprofits. We wrap up by presenting the research results to you and your organization and handing off the support materials. Just as with all of our research, the results are made public on Philanthropedia's and GuideStar's websites, and then you're also welcome to share the results in any way that you'd like, internally or externally. So that's our general methodology and process, and from start to finish, that usually takes about 20 weeks. So now that you have a good understanding of the process, I'll walk you through some of the product details. So when we're talking about purchasing the Philanthropedia Custom Research product, what does that mean? For starters, we can offer to conduct research on your behalf for two, three, or four causes of your choosing. And these run simultaneously within that same 20-week process that we discussed. And from that research, a list of 10 to 20 experts identified nonprofits uh, that are seen as high impact will emerge for each cause. And since our, method is, excuse me, our methodology is consensus-based, the numbers do fluctuate, and we can't guarantee an exact number of top nonprofits that will emerge. One of the things that I think is great about this research is the rich expert comments. So you'll receive detailed information on what impact these nonprofits are having, their organizational strengths, and how they could improve. 
And these comments are the pieces of information that a collection of experts decided were the most important to note. And collectively, they can really help to paint a picture of a nonprofit overall. And while our prices can vary depending on your timeline and other factors, we start this product offering at $20,000 for two causes, $25,000 for three causes, and $30,000 for four causes. So that's a brief overview of the product, and we'd be happy to dive into more detail or answer particular questions in the Q&A session. Now I'd like to spend some time looking at Philanthropedia's work and what makes us uniquely qualified to offer this product. Since Philanthropedia's founding, we've worked on a wide array of causes that range from animal rights to global water sanitation issues. And you can see here that to date, 2,492 experts have participated in our research, providing reviews on 452 nonprofits across 30 causes. Having applied our research at the local, national, and international levels, we've gained a lot of insight on how to mold our methodology to unique situations and produce strong, reliable results. So I'd like to introduce you to Minnesota Philanthropy Partners, who we've now partnered with twice. Minnesota Partners is a progressive consortium of community foundations, which supports the St. Paul Foundation, the Minnesota Community Foundation, and 1,600 other affiliates across Minnesota. And the organization has utilized our services as part of their strategy to bring vetted, targeted information to their community of donors. When Philanthropedia began offering custom research, they reached out to us because they saw an opportunity to really dive deep into Minnesota's, into Minnesota's causes that folks care about. Having had a positive experience with us, they, and more importantly, the reception of the research, Minnesota Partners decided to contract with us for a second time. So now let's take a closer look at the research itself. In October, 2011, we released the results for Minnesota's environmental research. In total, 178 local environmental experts recommended 18 high-impact nonprofits working in the environment in Minnesota. And here we highlighted a range of environmental nonprofits that focused on conservation, advocacy, direct service, and more. In April 2012, we released a second set of custom research results around workforce development. 100 experts working in Minnesota's workforce development field recommended 18 high-impact local nonprofits. And it's great to note the variety of organizations highlighted through this research. Some nonprofits that emerged focused on specific po populations that are relevant to Minnesota's cultural landscape. Others were youth-focused, income-focused, or serving entrepreneurs. And while we ran the environment and workforce development causes concurrently and completed the research in May 2011, Minnesota partners wanted to wait to release the results so that they would coincide with their new flagship publication, MinSites. This is another example of how you can really accommodate your needs as a foundation in the work that we perform. So once Minnesota partners was ready to release them, they published the results in MinSites and in a very creative way that we'll show you an example of in a few minutes. And we published the results on Philanthropedia and GuideStar's websites. On our most recent work with Minnesota Partners, uh, we have not yet released it. And we partnered with them a second time to identify high-impact nonprofits um, working in access to arts and culture and access to healthy foods. These causes are another really great example of tailoring the research to fit your needs. Minnesota Partners was specifically interested in looking not just at arts and culture and healthy foods as broad causes. Instead, they were interested in identifying organizations that increase access for populations that are traditionally cut off from these opportunities and services. And in those causes, you can see that 124 experts in access to arts and culture identified 18 high-impact nonprofits and 99 experts working in access to healthy foods in Minnesota, recommended 15 outstanding nonprofits in that cause. So moving on, we'll explore what makes this product a particularly good fit for foundations. We believe that the custom research product is specifically useful to foundations since it lends itself so well to the work that you already do. As you likely know from your own experience, donors are increasingly interested in using information to guide their giving. 
GuideStar, in collaboration with Hope Consulting, recently published a study called Money for Good 2. And that study found that more donors could be influenced to, to research before giving if they had better information about nonprofits. Additionally, one of the most important pieces of information that donors want, but the least available data, is on nonprofit effectiveness. And Philanthropedia's research solves that very problem. This research process is also a great way to compare sometimes very different organizations. It can be difficult to evaluate advocacy and direct service organizations alongside each other, but looking at them from the perspective of having an impact on the cause as a whole helps to boil down the criteria to look at long-term results. Our research tends to uncover great nonprofits doing work in a variety of different ways for the sector. Similarly, this methodology offers donors choice. We curate a list of organizations deemed by experts to have the highest impact, and that narrows the field down to a manageable number of nonprofits to invest in. And from there, other information that we provide on leadership, expert comments, and financials can shape the decision that best works for each individual. Our philosophy at Philanthropedia has always been to encourage donors to choose a cause with their heart, and then an organization with their mind. We provide the details necessary to choose from among a variety of outstanding organizations. An important feature of custom research is that it's flexible obviously in the cause and location, but also in the way that you use the research results to benefit your foundation and your community. One way to consider using this product is when your foundation is considering funding in a new area. Perhaps your foundation hasn't explored arts and culture in your community and you have a new donor who wants to develop a new funding area. You can leverage Philanthropedia's custom research to uncover some of the key experts in the field, which would be very helpful in hiring a program officer for funding in that new area. It can also help to give you a general overview of the kinds of nonprofits doing work in the space. And of course, the research also uncovers the most effective nonprofits, which may lead to a starting point when soliciting applications for grants. Another great way to leverage this research is to help your foundation make internal programming decisions. Perhaps you're already funding an education, but you want to understand how experts in the community perceive great nonprofits at work. This research can allow you to learn about new organizations, startups, and possibly new areas within a cause to consider funding, such as the role of summer camps in aiding education. You can also use this research to learn something about some, some ideas that have been coming up in the news um, or that a lot of donors have been requesting information about. You may not decide to create a whole new cause area or funding area around it, but you might want to provide some resources for donors in your community. The environment was a timely and relevant topic for Minnesotans, and so Minnesota partners wanted to provide their community with more information about the latest work in environment that nonprofits were doing in their state. You could also choose to share the research externally. And you may wish to publish these results directly in a variety of ways in print and on your website. And you might also consider the possibility of creating new kinds of special resources just for your community based on these results. Minnesota Partners, for example, chose to pull out parts and pieces of the research that they commissioned to create this amazing publication for their community. You can see here that they took various recommendations of organizations and tailored the results in a way that resonates with their constituents by highlighting organizations based on the type of work that they do. So you can see here that if you care about advocacy, perhaps you want to consider funding Envi Minnesota Environmental Partnership, and if you care about wildlife, and, and so on. So you can see that there are a variety of ways to leverage this research to provide timely and important information about highly effective nonprofits in your community. And we're happy to work with you to tailor the integration of our results with your foundation in whatever way works best for you. Um, so hopefully this time has given you an understanding of Philanthropedia and the custom research product and just a few of the many ways that you can leverage this tool. So with that, I'd like to conclude the formal part of our presentation and open up the floor for questions. Thanks, Jasmine. We've had a few questions come in. So the first one is, 
how do you decide which cause to research on behalf of a foundation? That's a great question. This is Erin. Um, so we, we really work very closely with um, our partners to, de to decide which cause to specifically focus on. So um, we certainly can come to the table with some suggestions, but often we look to the foundation or the group we're working with to um, help uh, let us know which areas are most important to them, what they're trying to accomplish. Do they want to look into a totally new area? Do they want to um, review something that they've already done a bit of work on? Um, and together, we'll work very closely with them to help define the scope of the research so that it, it becomes as specific as it should be. You know, education is a very broad topic, so we might, you know, figure out if the right focus is early childhood education or um, post-secondary education. Um, and so we'll ask a number of questions and gather a lot of information from our partners to figure out what the right fit is. Um, and, and the type, types of questions we'll be asking will be focused um, also on what our methodology is best suited to address. So um, with our methodology, we likely wouldn't do something so specific as just, you know, um, uh, preschool programs, but, you know, early childhood development might be broad enough to cover that, that type of information. So it's, it's a very collaborative, um, close process that we'd work on with the organizations directly. Great. Do you recommend partnering with other foundations to sponsor the research? Um, yeah, that's that's a really great question, too. So you can see in the example that we gave with uh, the Minnesota Philanthropy Partners, um, that is a, a consortium group. Um, and it certainly was um, headed and initiated by um, just a few foundations at the top. Um, it benefited a, a much wider community. Um, depending on uh, the, the, the level of collaboration there might be in a community, um, this can be a very effective way to collaborate with other um, funders, other partners, high net worth donors, um, think tanks, different groups in the area um, who all value uh, learning about this kind of information in this way. Um, if you all have a shared um, mission or need, um, coming together can be a very effective way to fund this research and provide the resource to all, all members in your community. So um, it's, it's a model that we've um, seen work really well. Of course, it's not the only option, um, but it, it does work very well for, for some groups. And for the experts that participate in the survey, do they get paid or do you compensate them in a different way? That's a great question. Um, so none of our experts are paid to participate in the research. Generally what motivates people to participate is that they care about the field. And so um, it's a great way to influence the way that donors perceive the field and to make sure that funding is going toward nonprofits that are having the most impact, and that tends to be enough of motivation. Great. And lastly, what happens in those conversations with the experts? Um, so in those conversations, we um, look to, to clarify the kind of research that we're doing and make sure that we can answer any questions that they might have. So um, just really encouraging them to participate and easing any uh, concerns. So, uh, for example, one concern tends to be anonymity, and all of our experts' um, responses are anonymous, and so make sure that we communicate that. Great. We just had one last question come in. Um, if, do you open your research results to outside researchers, like PhD students? Sorry, do we make them available, or, um, yeah, the or results. would we do this? Yeah, so um, all of our results um, we do make publicly available. Um, that's, that's, you know, one of the, the sort of foundational um, tenets that we built ourselves, our, our research on. We think it's really important for everyone to have access to this data. So um, if, you, if anyone went to our website today, every piece of data that we've collected is available there. From the first, you know, rounds of research we ran in 2009 through reruns and other new causes um, all the way up through today, um, folks can see exactly which nonprofits were recommended, um, how many experts and who those experts were um, who participated in that research, all of the comments, all of the results. We make all of that publicly available both on the Philanthropedia website and on um, GuideStar's website. So that is a, a great research tool for 
for graduate students and, and many others in the field. Great. Well, thank you so much, Erin and Jasmine, for taking the time to be here today. We really appreciate it. And for all of you on the phone, thank you for being with us. Uh, we'll be following up with a link to the presentation in a few days. And as you can see, um, right here you can contact Jasmine Morrow if you are interested in learning any more. Watch out for the email coming soon with the presentation, and we hope you have a great weekend.